What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers? You may recognize this as the AK-12. It's Russia's newest standard issue assault rifle being fielded in mass combat for the first time currently in Ukraine. Now the real question is, does it suck? Let's talk about that. So in order to talk about that, we have to talk about why we have the AK-12. The AK platform has been around for a long time, specifically since 1947. This is a Type 1 AK-47 built in Russia in 1949. As you can see, while a lot of stuff has changed on the AK over the years, uh, the heart of the gun has stayed pretty much identical. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So naturally, Russia tried to fix it. Of course, I kid, kind of. But there have been multiple iterations of the AK platform throughout the years in many different countries. Romania, China, Bulgaria, East Germany. The Yugos had a bunch of different variants. But the variant that really changed everything was the AK-74. Likely due to the success of the American 556, uh, the Russians switched over to the 545. So that's what we see here with that good, good seven and six stuff. In our mostly assembled <laughs> AK-74 here, uh, you'll see a couple of updates that uh, they did to the platform, one of which being a 90 degree gas block, unlike the 45 degree tr traditionally on the AKM. You also see a front sight block that has 24 millimeter threads on it so that the muzzle device threads onto the front of the block instead of the front of the gun. You still see AK-74s like this on the battlefield today, although it was updated in the last 20 years or so with the AK-100 series, which kind of tried to standardize everything to use a lot of the same stuff, like the same gas blocks, same front sight blocks, just really try to make everything have a standard. Foreign concept to me because I have no standards. Now the Type 1, of course, being a beautiful piece of history that I'm privileged to own. And if you didn't see the video on that, then that means you're probably not subscribed. You should probably change that. Subscribe to me and you could get a Type 1. I mean, like, I'm not going to give it to you, but like, you theoretically could get one in the future. It could happen. Now, while side rail mounted optics and things were a thing that existed, it was clear that the AK platform kind of needed to evolve a step further to keep up with the West. The ability to easily mount optics, handguards, lasers, IR stuff, flashlights, that's not really something that the AK, as it came out of the factory, had the ability to do. So in 2011, Russia started the AK-12 program. This is where you have the first iteration, which is very sexy and is much sexier in my opinion, the Zlobin prototype. This is probably what you remember from like Battlefield and some of the early Call of Duty games when they had the AK-12, this is what it was, which is why in my mind that's what I think of when I think of early AK-12. God, that was a good looking gun. However, due to some politics and I think a merger uh, of different weapon factories into Kalashnikov Concern, which is what it is now, uh, the Zlobin prototype was completely shit canned. There's been a number of reported reasons as to why this was, uh, one of which is theorized that it cost a lot of fucking money. The Russian military wanted to update the AK-74. They didn't want it that fucking bad. So in 2018, they adopted this, the AK-12 as we see it today. Without the optic, of course. Because of, in true modern Russian doctrine, you either get an optic or you get a rail to mount it on. Pick one. So what kind of upgrades do we get on this? We get a folding stock, which had been part of the AK-74 since the AK-74M. The 100 series had these. Although this one's kind of a little bit of a better folder. I like the button here in the rear that allows you to just push down and you no longer need a, uh, a latch in the front, which is uh, how most of them did it before. We get a dust cover here that integrates a rail for mounting optics. New set of furniture, including this stock here in the rear that is adjustable. We get a pistol grip here and we get a set of polymer hand guards that include a rail on the top and a rail on the bottom. You also get a gas block, front sight block combo. So you see you got your front sight in here, which eliminates the need for a front sight block. However, they put one here anyway, or at least a block here, which is for your detent on your muzzle brake, which seems to work quite well. Uh, this weapon's pretty flat shooting, especially if you gas it properly. You also get a dope new magazine. In my opinion, the best part of the AK-12 program. It is a polymer magazine with uh, steel reinforcement. You also have uh, a round count here with a windowed mag that allows you to see I don't know, how much ammunition you have, much like a lot of things the Americans run with the P mags. Some of the ones, unfortunately not this one, uh, have a little tab that sticks out the bottom. It's a little peg that indicates when the mag is fully loaded. This one doesn't have one for whatever reason, but that's what they come with. So if the follower is all the way down to the bottom of the gun, this, pe uh, this peg will stick up so that if you have it in your chest rig, you can easily see if your magazine is fully loaded or not. Another thing that they integrated here on the magazine was a flat at the bottom of the mag. This is so the gun is not awkward to shoot when you have to shoot prone. So the magazine doesn't stick out the bottom as much. In fact, it gives you a nice little flat spot here so that the weapon isn't raised as high 
and it's relatively level. So I guess if you're not issuing this with a, you know, a bipod or anything, you know, you just use the mag as a monopod. This is pretty much the opposite of American doctrine to my understanding, but I guess the Russians realize that if the conscripts are gonna fucking do it anyway, might as well make them a little bit more stable with it. I really like these magazines and I rock them in stuff that is not my AK-12. It's drip or drown and I intend to drip. You also have an enhanced safety selector lever here so it has an extra tab sticking out a little farther which just makes the selector easier to manipulate. Which is good because you have four positions now including a two round burst. That mostly works. So Brandon you might be asking, where, where do you get this notion that the AK-12 might be kind of stinky? Well there's a few things that stand out, some of which we noticed while building this one, some things that uh, I picked up uh, while shooting AK-12s before we had one. AK-12 is not perfect and let me count the ways. So for one, this looks like it is an AR-15 buffer tube. It's an adapter plate here in the rear that has a tube sticking out of it that is adjustable, has multiple positions, and is roughly the same diameter as an AR-15 buffer tube. It isn't. This is not compatible with other AR-15 accessories that are widely available even in Russia. So you like the Magpul stocks and want to put one on this. D tough fucking shit. You get AK-12 stock for AK-12. This stock is remarkably Okay, like I don't have any real problems with it, I just don't like the one size fits all kind of thing, not being able to change it out. The fire control group. I noticed that if the hammer is forward, like ours is, it has significant resistance here in the middle part of the gun, which if you just rack through it, it's not a big deal, which this gun I will show completely clear. Unlike other AKs, there's a little bit of resistance in the middle on normal AKs, but this is like, it's a good bit of resistance that you have to pull through. I think that has to do with the burst mechanism, but I'm not sure. Many awkward times I've tried to do like an underhand charge and like my muscle memory knows what charging an AK with the hammer forward feels like, but you have to use significantly more force to actually do this one properly. That is a very minor gripe compared to the rest. Another thing is the selector override. So like I mentioned before, you have an enhanced selector lever that allows you to uh, switch between positions while not having to go all the way forward out to the front like uh, other AKs do. This has been out for a while. Uh, they're just you know, moving to this as a standard now. Unfortunately, what this also allows you to do is be able to override your selector pretty far, including uh, this little selector catch here. Uh, the selector stop is significantly smaller than other AKs, which means you could just do this and just completely override the selector off the gun, which I believe still works. Yeah, it's, it still works, but it's just kind of fucking awkward and to be honest, it blocks your ability to access the trigger a little bit. And I know that they're doing this in the field. This is not just this kit build. They're doing this in the field because I have seen pictures of captured AK-12s, uh, including their previous owners, where the selector has completely, you could tell they got into fucking combat and they went, oh fucking shit balls, and just slammed their selector all the way down to try to engage and uh, overrode the selector off the side of the gun. Is it why they got killed uh, holding an AK-12? Most likely not, but that is the condition that they did die holding an AK-12. Because when you're in combat, that's a pretty bad time to get caught lacking. And if you're like me, you never want to get caught lacking. That's why I carry every day. If you carry every day, then you need to sign up for USCCA. They're a group that makes sure that you have the training, tools, and knowledge to make sure that you feel comfortable carrying every day. Not this, uh, like a handgun, probably. I don't know, I'll tell you what to do. But seriously, they're an awesome group to be a member of. I'm a member and they're a big supporter of the channel. So if you want to check them out, go ahead and check out the links down in the description and in the pinned comment. So anyhow, moving up forward, we have our handguard here. It is a neat addition to be able to have Picatinny up top and on the bottom here in case you wanted to run a grip or, or something up top. What, what would you want to run up top? Well, there's a lot of things. You could run a, uh, a laser or, or a, uh, a pursed unit in Russia. It's kind of like their version of the pack for like uh, running a visible laser or an IR laser to run with night vision. I run one on my personal 74 just because I think it's kind of neat to run a Russian Purst. The only problem is I wouldn't want to do that because one, the Picatinny is plastic and two, in an attempt, I guess, to get better harmonics, it is free floated from the barrel and it does float a good bit. This is not ideal for anything that you're trying to keep zeroed. Something that even let's say I was just perched up on a wall, right? And I've got the gun resting. That is, I'm not putting much pressure on this either. That is visibly shifting where your point of aim would be on a laser or something. So meanwhile, you think you have your, your IR laser on the target, when in reality, you're gonna be shooting like 10 feet low and if you're lucky, bouncing it in. 
Now moving up to our gas block combo here. Uh, so we have our gas plug here, which is meant to be removed so that you can actually clean this gas tube. That leads us to kind of the other problem. The gas tube assembly here is not meant to be removed from this gun. It is part of the assembly that is welded here to the top of the front trunnion. The point being is, you can't really remove your gas tube, which this plug comes out and allows you to clean it. These are issued with corrosive ammo. You kind of need to do that, and you kind of need to clean that area. And there's a little area in between where the gas tube is uh, around. It kind of shrouds the gas block here. That you can't really access because you can't take the fucking gas tube off. These are kind of the wave tops, right? And the biggest thing is, you know, is this an improvement over a typical 74? In a modern combat space, yeah, sure. Uh, I, I would say so, at least. But the biggest thing is, compared to what? Is it good? Is it bad? Well, compared to what? So let's look at what some of the Russian operators in the field, some of the real, like, I kill people for a living kind of dudes, actually run. One of the options that you see most prevalently, you'll probably know this, is Zenitko. So we have, uh, I have an Arsenal SAM-5 here. This is a Bulgarian-made Arsenal SAM-5 in 5.56. It's a milled receiver gun, so I've got a uh, JMAC Customs uh, stock adapter here in the rear to be able to run an AR-15 buffer tube with a stock here. I've also got my B-33 dust cover rail here with the long B-30 rail and the B-31 upper rail. So dust cover mount is Zenico, upper handguard, lower handguard, all Zenico. This little uh, grip up front, also Zenico. Top it off with the JMAC brake, just because, you know, JMAC, they're my boys and girl. Now, of course, up top for an optic, we have our L-Can uh, because it look cool on Garantham's AK. Zenitco is an accessory company that is based out of Russia. RIP. And has been widely regarded as some of the best AK accessories available to buy on the market. So this affords us the ability to do a lot of things that the AK-12 can't do. For one, you have a longer handguard. So if you want to do basically what any modern Western doctrine teaches and hold the rifle further out, you can do so without burning the shit out of your hand. This is not an option on the AK-12. Uh, if you go out and try to grab, do C-clamp, or just really try to hold it out farther, you are grabbing a, not the fucking handguard, there's a reason they call it a handguard, the gun gets hot, but you're also grabbing the hottest part of the fucking gun, or you're making contact with, even if you go just a little too far. They remedy this a little bit with some of the long handguards that I've seen them run. Those are pretty hot and I'd love to pick up a set, but you know, again, rip. But I really haven't even seen those issued. I've Predominantly, well not even predominantly, I've only seen these. Shit, Zenitco has even fixed the AK-12 handguard. Zenitco sells uh, a, a 12 version, I think it's called their Sport 12, for handguards for the AK-12 that look a lot better and they're made out of metal and they look like they won't burn the shit out of your hand. Despite this being manufactured in Russia by a company that does a lot of work with Russian special forces, the Russian government said, nah. What the Zenico also allows you to do is have a sturdy platform that you can mount lasers, IR stuff, like a pursed, uh, anything, and I'll show you an example of that here in a second. You can mount this, zero it, and it will hold zero. That is the important part. If your gun isn't shooting where the laser says it's gonna shoot, there's no reason to have a fucking laser. There's even another option that's come out relatively recently, and it's my personal favorite. This is in the form of Sure Shot. Now I still do have, this is my personal, I guess, work 74. <laughs> Still has some Zenico on it. You know, you get your Zenico uh, RK3 here and your PT1 for the stock. But the chassis here that we're running, like the hand guards and the dust cover rail are SureShot, SureShot Armament Group. This is their Mark III rail. This is another company that is based out of Russia. A lot of the spooky Russian dudes I know run this exact same setup. Well, maybe not the exact same, but the same rail. What's cool about this setup is that it knows that there's really not a lot of ways that are good uh, to make a dust cover mount hold zero on an AK. So the important part is this front section, which is attached pretty fucking solid up front. And you get the rear part where you can run stuff that doesn't matter quite as much, like a magnifier, and this can be removed. So you can still disassemble your gun pretty fucking easily. And despite this thing looking heavy as all fuck, it's actually not too bad. This is our purse, by the way, our purse up front. This is a purse four and it's got visible and infrared uh, lasers that are visible, of course, visible spectrum being an actual, you know, red laser and IR for use with night vision. But again, you get a full rail up front that allows you to hold your hand out in a way that's a lot more comfortable, not worry about burning the shit out of yourself. You're also able to, again, zero stuff up front and on top without worrying about a plastic handguard that's going to shift, move around. 
So what's funny about this whole thing is I was actually talking to Henry from Nine Hole Reviews, and it seems like we came to almost identical conclusions about the AK-12 independently of each other. He's gonna be doing his video breakdown on this, I don't know, maybe sometime in the next week or two. And me and him are probably gonna sit down and have some sort of conversation about the AK-12 in the next couple of days. Henry, by the way, runs an excellent channel over at Nine Hole. I would definitely recommend checking him out, especially if you like more of the educational kind of content like this. So overall, after all of this, do I think the AK-12 sucks? The answer is, no, I, I don't think it sucks. It allows you to do some stuff that the AK-74 just doesn't really do as well. So in that way, I guess they kind of succeeded at their goal. What really sucks is that they had every opportunity to make this gun actually good and not something that just doesn't suck. They could have made this gun awesome. They had everything laid out in front of them if they actually talked to their people who were good at doing stuff with AKs, who were all running the Sure Shots, the Zen and Co. They had all of the resources to make a gun that fucks. Instead, we got this. This is you. This is the guy she told you not to worry about. It's very cool to have this as kind of like an example of, again, the progression of the AK from the Type 1 all the way to modern day. <sighs> but fuck, this could have been a lot better. But anyhow, hopefully this was an enlightening discussion, I guess, on the progression of the AK and where it is at today. And hopefully you have a little bit better understanding of the AK-12. This isn't usually kind of the, the more funny direction we take videos, but I just thought with everything going on, you guys might want to hear, uh, I guess, my take on the AK-12 and where it stacks up. So if you want to see more content like this, let me know down in the comments. But I definitely encourage you to subscribe, especially if you're a big gun guy, especially if you stayed all the way through this fucking video. Probably means you at least have some interest in the AK platform, and if that's true, you'll like it here. Anyhow, that's about all I have for you guys today. I appreciate you watching to the end, and as always, I'll see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. The about The ability. What the fuck? <clears throat> You also get an enhanced selector lever. Fuck. You also get an enhanced selector lever. Fuck. Why is that so hard to say? Level. Level. Level or never. Wow. <laughs> I was actively, like the reason I stopped, I was actively listening to make sure it wasn't getting louder. Because it went. And I'm like, if it gets much louder, I'm putting fucking face down and hands over. Like, it's coming back, boys. <laughs>